Hey guys, it's uh, Marcelo from Reef Catalyst LED and uh, Happy Roads Reef Club. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Charles, Wawa Wing, Wing, uh, um, Sharkbait, uh, uh, JR, GR, GND, Ricky, and all the other Reef Club uh, moderators for, for getting this uh, excellent piece of equipment. What we have here is uh, <coughs> it's the, the Apogee 200 series. This is our PAR meter, so a lot of people are going to be using this to, to look at what kind of uh, PAR uh, photosynthetic active radiation or per photosynthetic usable radiation that they're using under coral. Okay, so one thing I want you to understand is there's all kinds of parameters online and on the internet. I'm going to show you how to use this piece of equipment, but you have to be aware of something. Okay, par and per they go hand in hand, but that doesn't just because you have a par meter doesn't nece necessarily tell you what the true per is. So be careful. Okay, be careful whenever you use par and you use um, you know, technical measurements to determine what your coral need and don't need. Because if you do that, you, you might just blast your coral or you might just underfeed them, okay? So make sure you, you check your equipment that you're using now, right? And if you, if you decide to upgrade to halides, 400 watt halides, or even LED units, don't just assume, okay, these LEDs are going to put off, you know, 300 or 400 uh, par, and that's what my coral need. No, that's not what your coral needs. One of the biggest things you need to make sure about is acclimation, okay? So make sure you acclimate the coral. So I'm going to keep this pretty short and sweet so you learn how to use this PAR meter, and then I'm going to head over to Fish Safari and change my clothes because it's the morning, and yes, I wore this yesterday. And my mustache is gone, sorry. So we have the Apogee 200 series PAR meter, right? What you're going to do is when you, when you borrow this unit, you're going to press power, okay? Now you're going to have options here. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to press mode, now, mode gives you the options of sun or electric. If you're using a, any kind of tube system ex or halides, you're going to use electric, okay? Now, diodes are a different nature, a different beast. So if you're using LEDs slash diodes, you're going to use sun. So I'm just going to use the up arrow. So up and down arrow is going to help you select the different options, okay? Now, I, I'm on sun. Sun's flashing, so I press mode again. It's already preset to to sample. You don't need log, okay, unless you're going to be doing some long-term measurements. So I'm going to have it on sample. Now it's going to be on uh, run or restore. Restore just means that you, you restore it to pre-factory uh, pre settings. No, we're just going to run. So I'm going to press mode again. Okay, so what's going to happen is, well, it's going to go, go, down, to, go down to one or, or zero. So it's calibrated, all right? Now the system's calibrated. So I'll show you again. Press mode. You get your options between sun and electric. I pick sun. Press mode again. You're going to have between sample and log. I press sample. Now you're going to have between run and restore. I picked run. Now if you want to change any of those settings, you only have two options on each uh, setting. You're going to use your up and down arrows. All right? So I'm going to pick run. So now I go to mode. It goes to zero. Now I'm ready to test my tank. So what we have here is the Reef Catalyst LED. And... Uh, Typically, most people run their LEDs about six inches from the tank. So what I have here is my Reef Callus LED set for six inches from the tank. Now, again, this is purely for testing purposes. Uh, I have my, my LED maxed out to 100% white and 100% blue. Does that mean that this is what I'm going to use for my coral? No, it's not because I've seen what happens when I feed my coral too much PAR. Um, so uh, we're going we're gonna to take this uh, sensor right here and we're going to put it up to highest point all right now what you're seeing is 3,000 par at the highest point on my LED now I'm gonna bring it under the water at the highest point so we're looking at between about 900 800 to 900 par okay now remember it's gonna change because of uh, because of uh, the ripples of the water Going across, the, going across the top of my tank. So I know for a fact at this level of my rock work that uh, my par is around 400. Let's see if we can get another par reading here. 400 to 500. Okay? Minus the, the ripples of the water. So I'm looking at 500 par where my acros are. Now, people are thinking, well, that's great. That's perfect for acros. Honestly, no, it's not. Remember, you always want to look at your coral and ask yourself, is the polyp extension good? Is the color good? Is the coral happy? If the coral starts to look, look bleached, 
you might be overfeeding your, your coral. So I'm gonna go to my lowest point, dead center, and if you come over here, you're gonna see that it's at this point where my gorilla nipples are. So I'm gonna come down here, all the way down, and remember, with, the, with this white eye, you wanna keep it as upright as possible, or you're gonna get incorrect measurements. Okay, now at this lowest point, what we're looking at is about 200, about between 250 and 220, okay? And um, now this won't be a very accurate reading because, again, we're going to be off the footprint. It's going to be on the, on the far side of my tank. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, I, I can't get there. Get on the step stool or the stool. Yeah. No, it's okay. I, I think everybody gets it, okay? So, I mean, there are charts that say what the part measurements should be for the specific coral. Um, but you have to understand, like I said, make sure that you look at your original lights and look at what your coral are doing. If your coral are growing and they're nice and happy and they're growing fast, that doesn't mean you, you need any more par than what you already have, okay? But uh, it can't help to add more par. And when you do decide to do that, you very, you very much so need to acclimate your coral by either changing the intensity of your light or lowering the level of where your coral are at in the tank, okay? And I'm gonna leave you with one last test, all right? Uh, this here is at 100% and 100%. I'm blasting my coral. Uh, I am going to, I never go higher than 60 to 70, 70% on my lights, and I normally keep them one foot to two feet higher than the norm, okay? And as you can see, uh, the intensity here is very, very low. The last measurements that I've uh, seen actual recordings of Let me see The last actual measurements or recordings that I've seen is that LPS likes to be in par measurements between 100 to 200 I think now don't quote me on that there is documentation for it, okay, but uh, the intensity of these lights here based on my controller are currently at 20% light 60% blue. Now let's get a par reading here. Okay? At the high end, you're looking at about a thousand, about 2,500. You're looking at about 2,500 uh, par. All right? Now, coming any lower without my fish biting my hand. Hey, peace. Okay, so we're looking at about 200 right here. Let's go a little lower. Okay, so about 150, uh, near, near, oh, here we go, about 160 near the center, all right? Now, if you notice, here's my Duncans. You know, Duncans need some light, they're LPS, but do they really need 100 to 200 par? They're in the far corner getting indirect light. Let's look at the, let's look at the reading of the par. You're looking at about 86 and 90, and my Duncans are nice and happy in this position. Here's my uh, here's my hammer coral, my branching hammer coral, coral. And you look here, and they're getting 44 par, and they've always been in those positions, and they grow and they grow very much. Now the biggest test is I have a frog spawn in totally indirect lighting, okay? Probably getting no par whatsoever. Now, uh, babe, if you come around the corner, this is my frog spawn. I don't know how many heads that he's grown. At least once a month, maybe two months, he'll grow an extra head. Okay? No, no, that's not my frog spawn. Oh. That's my frog spawn. It's okay. She's new to reefing. Sorry, guys. So that's my frog spawn right here. Okay? Totally indirect lighting. And you're thinking, this guy must be getting really good par. He's probably getting 100 to 200 par. He's growing all these heads. He's nice and fat. But let's look at what the readings really are. I'm going to climb on this table. and Hopefully it doesn't break on me. And I'm going to get a reading of this uh, frog spawn LPS and almost totally indirect lighting. I'm going to put it at the very top of where the frog spawn is. Okay. Now, babe, if you look at this reading right here, can you tell me what it says? 26. 26 par. 25, 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a mid-20s par 
for this LPS coral. All right, so what does that mean? What is that telling me? Well, that's, that's telling me that par is very necessary. Per is very necessary. But don't think that just because you get a great light that it's going to be the end all be all to making your coral uh, sustainable or viable in a tank. There's so many other things you have to consider. You have to sit, consider uh, circulation of the water. You have to consider whether you target feed, filter feed, or whether you feed at all. You, you got to consider um, bio load, how many fish you have in your tank. I mean, there's so many things that people can, can tell you that's going to help you uh, help coral or benefit coral. A dark period, four to six hours of, of darkness, not having moonlights on, in my opinion, 24 hours a day. Okay? So, par is, par is important, par is necessary. And, uh, you know, uh, the better the lights are, it's definitely going to definitely gonna help you out. And I definitely, definitely recommend acclimating them. But, uh, again, remember, there's so many other factors involved in growing your coral. And you know, these LEDs from Reef Catalyst are definitely going to help you out. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me, give me a call. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review on this PAR meter. Again, it's the Apogee 200 series. Uh, we've seen how it works. We've seen it in action. And uh, we've seen the lights in action. So, uh... I mean, I guess proof is in the pudding. Uh, the par was great, but I, am I going to really set my, my levels to that level of par? No, I'm not. I'm going to base where I want to set the intensity of my lights and how much par I want to feed my coral based on how my coral are acting. Okay? You feed me a bunch of steak, I'm going to eat it, but I can only eat so much steak. You know? I, I'm, you only want to uh, let something consume as much as it needs. Once you start giving it too much, it starts to become unhappy. Think about it. All right, I'm uh, Marcelo from Reef Catalyst LED. If you want to check me out, go to uh, reefcatalystled.com. Uh, we have uh, units for sale. Uh, you can email me at uh, reefcatalystled at gmail.com. And uh, make sure to check out uh, Hampton Roads Reef Club. If you're part of the Reef Club and you're a contributing member, you get a 10% discount. And uh, we have a Reef Club meeting coming up on the 27th. Uh, it's going to be over, over at a, a, a buddy's house. Uh, we're going to be putting together a nice little raffle prize of a Pico tank with a uh, Reef Catalyst uh, Pico Mini LED light. So I hope you guys can make it. Y'all take care. Happy reefing. Now go change your t-shirt. Sorry.